When we hear of New York City, we think of Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, Manhattan, and of course, Staten Island. Rarely does anyone see New York City as an archipelago of many islands, some big and some small. In fact, depending on the tide, would you believe that there are between 36 and 42 islands that make up the entire city of New York? Today, I will take you on a journey through seven of these smaller and less prominent islands. These are the smaller islands with the most inhabitants, the ones with the best food, and the ones that are visited most often by tourists and locals alike. So without further ado, here are seven small islands worth visiting in New York City. Number one, Randall's Island. Randall's Island sits in the East River between East Harlem, the South Bronx, and Astoria, Queens. This is that big island you'll see below as you cross over the RFK Bridge. It wasn't always so big. What you're now seeing are Randall's Island and Ward's Island, two islands that were joined together by landfill to form one bigger island. For hundreds of years, both islands were home to a range of public facilities, such as a potter's field, where bodies of the poor and the unclaimed were laid to rest. At other times, they were also home to a smallpox hospital, a juvenile detention center, the world's largest insane asylum, and a home for Civil War veterans. After the two islands were joined by the early 1960s, the island simply became Randall's Island, and after a major transformation, it has become one of the city's main recreational hubs, hosting a multitude of special events. Randall's Island houses a state-of-the-art track and field facility, a golf center, tennis courts, over 60 playing fields, and miles of bike and pedestrian paths. There's even a bee sanctuary and a gorgeous flower garden at the water's edge. Besides driving, you can get to Randall's Island via the RFK Bridge walkway from Astoria, Queens, by the Ward's Island Bridge or bus from Manhattan, and from the Bronx via the new Randall's Island Connector, a pedestrian and bicycle-only path and bridge. Number 2. City Island City Island is a one-and-a-half-mile-long island that sits off the coast of the North Bronx. It is home to approximately 4,000 lucky residents and considered the best seaside getaway in New York City. In just a short bus ride from the Bronx mainland, you'll find yourself in a quaint little seaside village boasting a ton of hot spots for great seafood, antique shops, a nautical museum, and boating activities. And if you can get there on the evening of the first Friday of every month, you can catch a free tour of the island on the Seaside Trolley and receive special offers and discounts at the local businesses and restaurants. City Island is as close to a New England vibe as you're going to get while still remaining in the city. Number 3. Roosevelt Island Roosevelt Island is the skinny little island that wedges itself in the East River right between Queens and Manhattan. Like some of the other New York islands, it too formerly housed an insane asylum, otherwise known as the New York City Lunatic Asylum, a smallpox hospital, which currently lies in ruins, and a penitentiary. This highly overlooked island is currently home to 12,000 residents and has a high potential to be a cool little offshoot of Manhattan if someone would only give it some time and attention. There are many ways to get to Roosevelt Island. You can cross the little bridge from Queens, you can ride the train in, take the ferry, or you can ride in style by what I think is one of the coolest transit rides in all of New York City, the Roosevelt Island Tram. For just the swipe of a Metro card, you get to ride the tram right alongside the Queensborough Bridge for a bird's eye view of Manhattan's Upper East Side, the East River, and all of Roosevelt Island. From the island itself, you will get one of the most spectacular views of the Manhattan skyline while enjoying peaceful strolls along the river. Roosevelt Island is one of those places in New York you would think so many would flock to. However, except for the handful of people that actually live on the island, it can sometimes feel like you have the whole island to yourself. On the northern tip of the island is a cute little lighthouse surrounded by a park offering you fishing, barbecue, and picnicking options. At the southernmost tip, you'll find Four Freedoms Park, a gorgeous granite and tree-lined memorial dedicated to the most well-known native New Yorker, President Franklin D. Roosevelt, and offering a peaceful place to sit, contemplate, and appreciate the views of Midtown Manhattan. Number 4. Governor's Island Another underrated gem 
but this one has been gaining notoriety over the last few years. Accessible only by ferry and currently home to zero residents, Governor's Island is a wonderful little island which sits in New York Harbor right across from Red Hook, Brooklyn. It is largely a man-made island as more than half of it was created using the excavation material dug up during the construction of the Lexington Avenue subway line between 1902 and 1912. As with so many spots across New York City, it too received a major facelift over the last decade and it's quite impressive seeing what it has become today. There's a ton of history on this island, as it serves as a major component to the fortification of New York Harbor and a key site for American troops during the Revolutionary War, with the original fort still standing in great condition. In fact, Fort Jay was used to fight off the British Navy in 1776, and Castle Williams played a major role in the War of 1812, and British cannonballs could be found in the ground even over a century later. Today, this former military base is open to the public during the summer for picnics, bike rides, rock climbing, playgrounds, walks, festivals, and lots more. With the new picnic areas, the relaxing hammock grove, and a set of man-made hills giving you the most spectacular views of the harbor, you can literally spend an entire day on Governor's Island and still feel like you have to come back for more. Number 5. Ellis Island I'm sure most Americans already know the significance of Ellis Island, but for the sake of those tuning in from other countries, I'll mention it anyway. Ellis Island is a former immigrant inspection station that sits in New York Harbor right across from Jersey City. From 1892 to 1954, it was the first stop for 12 million immigrants seeking entry into the United States, a place where they were subjected to physical and mental exams to make sure they were fit to enter the country. Those found unfit were detained at the Ellis Island Hospital, while some were even deported back to their original country. Prior to welcoming immigrants, Ellis Island was actually used to ward off enemies. It was home to Fort Gibson, one of the earliest forts to protect New York Harbor from British forces in the War of 1812. It was also a military base, a naval artillery storage, as well as the place where officials would hang pirates and condemned criminals. And like many of our smaller New York islands, Ellis Island is no stranger to landfill expansion. The original island was only a little over three acres, but grew to its 27 acres with dirt and bedrock from the excavation of the IRT and BMT subway tunnels in Manhattan and Brooklyn. Ellis Island is a federally owned island in New York Harbor within the states of New York and New Jersey. What the heck does that mean? Though the island is federally owned, the original three-acre island, which sits within the New Jersey border, was under New York's jurisdiction since 1794. However, with the landfill expansion, 90% of the island ended up in Jersey waters. Since the landfill came from New York City rubble, New York still wanted all of Ellis Island for themselves. In 1998, after a five-year court battle, the Supreme Court awarded jurisdiction of the original three acres of Ellis Island to New York, while the remaining 24 acres went to New Jersey. Today, Ellis Island is open to the public and only accessible by the Statue Cruises Ferry from Battery Park, Manhattan and Liberty State Park in Jersey City. There, you can tour the Ellis Island Immigration Museum and spend hours learning about America's rich immigrant past. In addition, Statue Cruises gives a hard hat tour of Ellis Island's abandoned hospital for a behind the scenes view of a facility which remained untouched since 1954. If you're looking for a unique, creepy, but fascinating and informative experience, then this tour is definitely not to be missed. Number six, Liberty Island. Of course you knew this was coming next. And yes, I'm sure you know this already, but Liberty Island is home to our world-famous, larger-than-life Statue of Liberty, a gift to the United States from the people of France to commemorate a hundred years of friendship as well as the centennial of America's independence. Liberty Island sits within New York Harbor, right across from Jersey City. Similar to the history of some of New York's other small islands, it was home to a smallpox hospital, an asylum for national traders, and a military base. The construction of Fort Wood also played a vital role in protecting New York Harbor from British invasion during the War of 1812. In fact, the hollow Statue of Liberty and its pedestal were erected directly on Fort Wood and this star-shaped fort is the first place everyone enters before going up into the statue. 
Similar to Ellis Island, Liberty Island is just another one of those islands with confusing ownership. Again, it is federally owned within the states of New York and New Jersey. In this case, the land itself is under the jurisdiction of Manhattan, and since it sits within Jersey City's waters, the state of New Jersey maintains the water and the submerged land surrounding the island. So when it comes to Liberty Island, the land is mostly natural, with only a tiny tip of its western shore created by landfill. Receiving over 3.5 million visitors every year, Liberty Island is one of New York City's most popular tourist destinations. The best and only way to get there is again by the Statue Cruises Ferry from Battery Park, Manhattan or Liberty State Park in Jersey City. And your ferry ticket actually allows you to lump visits to both Ellis Island and Liberty Island together. Note that it will be like going through airport security before boarding the ferry, so be sure to travel light and to get there early. Liberty Island will offer you a multitude of attractions and fun things to do. You can walk the grounds and enjoy gorgeous views of the harbor. You can visit the brand new Liberty Museum for some interactive and engaging displays on the statue's history and construction. You can tour Fort Wood and the statue's pedestal. And if you were wise enough to book your tickets months in advance, you may even climb the spiral staircase up to the crown for the ultimate panoramic view of New York Harbor. Number 7. Rikers Island Okay, so this may not be the hottest tourist attraction for most, but just in case you have a friend or family member in custody, you just might want to make a short visit to Rikers Island to see them. I can't promise any fancy promenades, spectacular views, or gift shops, but you will be happy enough to visit your loved one. Rikers Island is located in the East River between the Hunts Point section of the Bronx and LaGuardia Airport in Queens. It is home to one of the world's largest correctional and mental institutions and is also known as New York City's most famous jail. Rikers is more of a city jail than a prison as approximately 85% of those detained have not been convicted of a crime. Most of the 13,000 inmates are actually awaiting trial and are either held without bail or remanded in custody. The remaining 15% of the population have been convicted and are only serving short sentences. The only way to get to Rikers Island is via the Rikers Island Bridge, by car or by bus, which you can catch in several locations. And as with all of New York City's islands, Rikers Island comes with its own history. In 1884, Rikers Island seemed like a good solution to alleviate the overcrowding at the then correctional facilities on Roosevelt Island. The city moved all prisoners to Rikers Island at a time when it was approximately 100 acres. However, for the next two decades after that, the city used prison labor to expand the island to more than 400 acres. Not using excavation material from other parts of the city, mind you, but using ash and garbage instead as landfill. Today, the smells emanating from the landfill have become unbearable as the garbage still continues to decompose and settle beneath the island's 10 jail facilities, making it a structural and an environmental disaster while posing health risks to all who inhabit and work on the island. On October 17, 2019, the City Council voted to shut down Rikers Island and replace it with four new and taller facilities in Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens and the Bronx by 2026. And for sticking with me to the very end, I've decided to throw in a bonus island just for you. Last but not least, we have number 8, Coney Island. We all hear of Coney Island and immediately think of its beaches, boardwalk, amusement parks, and the New York Aquarium. But have you ever stopped to wonder why on earth do we call it an island when it actually isn't? Well, for the longest time, it was an island. At the time of European settlement, the land that makes up the present-day Seagate, Coney Island, Brighton Beach, and Manhattan Beach was actually several islands with interconnecting waterways that were all constantly changing shape. Over the course of many years, the creeks and inlets that separated the islands were filled by a combination of man-made and natural processes, leaving just a single island that inherited the name Coney Island and a single creek behind it that was called the Coney Island Creek. By the 1960s, the midsection of the creek was filled due to the construction of the Belt Parkway and with debris from landowners and the construction of the Verrazano Bridge. This turned Coney Island Creek into an inlet with the western and eastern ends of the island becoming peninsulas. Today, as we all know, Coney Island is attached to Brooklyn mainland as if it had always been and we can access its attractions without having to cross any bridge and without having to take any ferry. 
That's it for New York's most popular smaller islands. Something tells me you're totally psyched and already on your way to visit at least one of the islands on this list. On the next video, I give you a tour of New York City's lesser known islands, so stay tuned for more. Now if there's anything else you'd like to add to this list, you know the drill. Feel free to share it with us in the comments below. And be sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more on New York City, our favorite city that never sleeps. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see each other next time.